Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'll be doing the CSEC Principles of Accounts, January 2020, Paper 2. But if you're stopping by my channel for the first time, welcome! And please hit that subscribe button and turn on your notification bell so that you know when new videos are being uploaded. Also, we'll be focusing on the first three questions. We'll be doing one to three of this paper. And so please give this video a thumbs up by liking it and sharing it with your friends. So let's get into this paper. So here we go. The first question says, suggest the A part, the first part of A says, suggest one reason why a trial balance must always be in balance. Now, one reason is because for each debit balance entry, there must also be an equal credit entry. So that's one mark. The second part of question 1A says, identify two errors that are not revealed by a trial balance. We have errors of omission. We have errors of commission. We have errors of original entry. We have compensating errors we have errors of principle and we know we have others but from this list that i have here you only need just two so any two that you select you will get your two marks they didn't ask us to explain them so we just list them as they are let's go to the other part of the question now here it says so here we have a uh, um we are given um it says b the following balances were taken from the books of henry spitzer at the beginning and end of 2019 so here we have they give us at the first of january 2019 and the 31st of january 2019 and we have the account titles and the number so as you can see on the screen that's the relevant information that they give us. Now, let's look and see what is it that they want us to do. So let's look at that and see what is it that they require ask of us. So here they say that we are required using the information given on page four, which was on that page we were, answer the following questions. One, calculate capital on the 1st of January, 2019, and uh, the 31st of December, 2019. Now, we were given an empty box that has capital on the 1st of January, 2019, for us to calculate that side, and then, as you can see, capital on the 31st of December, 2019. Now, this is what it should look like on your diagram. Now, mine, because of writing it on the screen, it's a little bit um, out of the box, but you should write it in the box correctly. Now, first, we know that first to find the capital, we would have to less our assets from our liabilities. So, given the information on that they gave us, we plug our information from that and put it here in our box. And so all our assets, bank was 3,800, cash was 1,900, machinery $25,000, accounts receivable 1,850, equipment was $12,500, and inventory $9,000. Now that is a total of $54,050. Now we're gonna list our liabilities. Our liabilities are our loan, $5,400, and then accounts payable, $1,625. Those two figures add up in total $7,025, and then we subtract that from our assets of $54,050, we get $47,025. So that represents the, the capital on the first of January 2019. Let's work out our capital on the 31st of December 2019. So based on the information that they are given to us on page four, we plug that information over onto this box. 
So our assets are bank, $2,000, cash, $500, machinery, $23,300, accounts receivable, $1,000, equipment, $10,600, and then inventory would be $7,500. And therefore, that's a total, our total assets is $44,900. We are going to list our liabilities. So our loan was $3,200 based on the information. And accounts payable is $1,150. Now, when we add those two totals together, we get $43,350. So we subtract that from the assets for 44900 We're left with $40,550. And that represents the capital on the 31st of December, 2019. So there we have it. So that's what it should look like. Let's move on to the other part of the question now. Here, it says here, what was, uh, sorry about that. What was uh, the net profit or net loss for the year? Now, we know for us to determine or for us to get the net loss or profit, we would have to deduct or subtract our opening capital from our closing capital. So all we do, we took those two figures that we got from the information we have just worked out. The closing capital was 40,550 because that represents the 31st of December 2019. And then our opening capital, which was the 1st of January 2019, $47,025. So we realized that our opening capital was more than our closing capital. So therefore, we have a net loss for the year of $6,475. Now, what was the total value of non-current assets at the year end? Now, we know our current assets are machinery and equipment. And so we just took those figures from the information that they gave us. Machinery was $23,300 and then equipment was $10,600. So that's a total of $33,900 for our non-current assets, non-current assets. So that is, you will be getting two marks for that. So let's move on now to the other part of the question. The fourth part says, how would inventory at 31st of December 2019 be classified on the statement of financial position, the balance sheet? We know that would be, or closing inventory, that would be current asset. So one mark for that. The fifth part of the question says, which item is a current liability? That's a giveaway. Accounts, payable. That's one mark for that. Let's go on to the other part of question one. So here, question the other. Question one, continue. The sixth part says, calculate the working capital at the start of the year. Now, we know that for us to find the working capital, it is current assets less current liabilities. That's the formula. Now, our current assets are bank, $3,800. And this information is taken from the 1st of January, 2019, that information that they gave us. So bank, $3,800. Cash, $1,900. Accounts receivable, $1,850. And then inventory, $9,000. So that's a total of our current assets, $16,550. And then we are going to less our current liabilities, which is accounts payable. And so that is $1,625. When we deduct $1,625 from $16,550, we're left with $14,925. And that is our working capital. And that you'll get three marks for that.
Let's go on to the other part of the question now. The seventh part says, in the table in B on page four, account titles one, two, and eight are current assets. List the names of the current assets in order of liquidity. Now, we know that order of liquidity according to the balance sheet, we, we, we know that actually it is how long those assets would take to convert into cash. Now, we know that for a conversion to take place, then we know that cash is always at the first because it does not take long to, to be, it does not require no conversion. So we have cash, then bank, then inventory. One mark for that. The eighth part of the question says, what term describes the reduction in the value of equipment? That is depreciation, and you'll get one mark for that. Let's go on to the other part of the question now. The ninth part says, how much money is owing to the firm at the year end? We know that represents owing accounts receivable and according to our information at the end, which would be, this figure is taken from the 31st of December, 2019, that is $1,000. And the 10th part, which is the final part for question one, what term is used to describe the business if it can pay its liabilities as and when due? That we know is solvent. That is worth one mark. So that's a total of 20 marks for the first question. Let's move on to the second question now. Here it says, Aris owns a souvenir business which bears which bears his own name on the first of november 2019 his business cash in hand was 1380 dollars and cash at bank was 1590 dollars during november the following transactions occurred and here you have on your screen the various transactions that occurred for example on the 5th of november cash sales total 1000 Thirty dollars on the eighth, paid Elwin Limited two thousand six sixty by check and receive a discount of one forty dollars. On the eleventh, transfer nine hundred eighty dollars of the cash and hand to the business bank account. Then a nineteen paid business telephone expenses two hundred and eighty dollars in cash. On the twenty second of November, receive a check from Aimed Supplies Limited in full settlement of its account of. $1,300, less a 3% discount for prompt settlement. Then on 24th, he wrote a check for $560 to pay for the electricity bill for his home. Then on the 30th, CM Stores was issued a check of $3,325 in full settlement of its account of $3,500. Let's see what the are asking us to do now. So here we have it. The A part says, using the form provided on page nine, prepare the business. Three column cash book for November 2019. One, balance the cash book at month end and bring down the balances in the next period. Total the discount columns. Enter appropriate folio references in the cash book as if entries had been posted and it says ledger accounts are not required. That is worth 19 marks, wow. So this three column cash book, 19 marks. The B part says, what is the significance of the balance on the bank account at the end of the month? Well, we know that's a bank overdraft. So let's look and see now what this question is worth 20 marks in total. So 20 marks, there you have it. So let's see what your three column cash book should look like. So here you have it on your screen. So they were they gave us this three column cash book um, folio for you to put in your different information, your folio section, a discount allowed. So all the particulars for your three column cash book. So 
that is what it should look like and they ask us to bring down our balances so there you have it on your screen that's what it should look like in your paper so all our balance is brought down and carried down it's there all right so you can always pause the video and take a closer note at it let's move on to number three or final part of the question it says Dabla Watson, a sole proprietor, presented the following trial balance at 31st of December 2019. So there we have our details. You can take a look at them. So that's our details. All right. okay so let's let's move on now and see what is it that they are requiring us to do now so the additional notes that they gave us one closing inventory at the 31st of december was twelve thousand dollars two depreciation is to be provided using the straight line method as follows a shop fittings at 10 percent per annum the van at 20 percent per annum Three, electricity prepaid, $50. Four, telephone account outstanding, $22. And then fifth, accrued salary, it's $500. And sixth, the provision for doubtful debts must be 15% of receivables. All right, so let's see now what they required us to do. So here, they say, A, in the space provided below, prepare an income statement for Dubla Watson for the year ended 31st of December, 2019. So here is our income statement. So Dubla Watson income statement for the year ended 31st of December, 2019. So first, we know we have our format as to how we calculate that. So first we have sales, 43,500, and all these information are taken from what they gave us. We less sales returns, which is $500. That give us a net sales of $43,000. Then we less cost of goods sold, or opening inventory is $10,000. Then next we add purchases, $35,000, that's for purchases. Then we less purchases returned, 620. Then that's our net purchases of $34,380. And our cost of goods available for sale is that we add the net purchase with our cost, our opening inventory of $10,000. And that gives us our cost of goods available for sale, $44,380. We are going to less closing inventory, $12,000. And that is thirty two thousand three hundred and eighty that's our cost of goods sold now our gross profit we deduct or we subtract our cost of goods sold from our net sales and that gives us ten thousand six hundred and twenty dollars now my paper because i wrote on the screen it's a little bit you know short so i'm going over on the next page but it's still continuing on Still continuing on so we are at the section where we reach our expenses now we're going to less our expenses so the provision for doubtful debts they say based on the additional notes 15 percent of what they gave us which is 800 dollars and then from our information given um on our trial balance we deduct that 80 dollars from that and that's a total of 40 dollars after deductions are done electricity they say $50 was prepaid, so 600 subtract 50, we're left with 550. And then our telephone, we were to add 22 to the 100 that they gave us, which is 122. And salaries, 3,000. And then we add that additional 500, which was, which gave us 3,500. And then bad debts, as was given, $980. Now our depreciation, as we saw, shop fittings, was 10% of $6,000, that's $600. And depreciation was um, of van, 
was 20% of $4,000 and that's $800. So our total expenses is $6,592. And when we deduct that from gross profit, 10,620, our net income is $4,028. So there you have it. Let's move on to our other part of the question that they ask us to do. So the B part says, the final part for three, in the space provided below, prepare an extract of Dobler Watson's statements of financial position balance sheet to show the capital section only as at 31st of December, 2019. So the area what you have it, the financial position as at 31st of December of Dobler Watson, financed by capital that they gave us, the balance at the start was 18,180. Then we're going to add our net profit, 4,028. That gives us 22,208. Then we less our joins, 1,800. So the balance at the end is $20,408. So there you have it. We have come to the end of question three. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like share and subscribe see you then